Hi, welcome back to the Interaxis YouTube channel and Interaxis.io. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about why decentralized finance is important. The last video, if you look at that, we talk about what decentralized finance is. And uh, the synopsis of that last video is decentralized finance is a way that we've offloaded risk and trust onto this series of code, of, of essentially computer code, so that we can do what's called disintermediation. Disintermediation is the process of taking out the intermediaries, like banks and potentially governments, from the process so that we can lower the fees and the friction that are involved in uh, making certain, in, in making investments and in moving the economy forward. So we'll talk first about what this looks like from a social perspective, why this is important from a from an overall global social perspective. So we'll start again with our atoms of the world, and the atoms of the world have some money that they want to invest. And they have a certain number of options that they can invest that money in. Uh, they want to make a return on their investment, and that return is based on some level of risk. Okay? Now you have the people like Ron of the world. Okay? And Ron can be down the street from me, or he can be anywhere in the world. And Ron might need money. And Ron needs money to run his business, which could be some sort of farm, manufacturing, real estate, whatever it might be. Okay, and he ha only has access to certain capital. And the capital he has access to might be based on where he is uh, physically. It might be based on where he is in his life, in his business and such. So he has access to certain capital. And let's say in this situation, Ron is in a country where the banks are untrustworthy or he just doesn't have access to banks where he is. Where does Ron go get the money he needs to run his farm, which would then grow crops that he could sell? It might employ people, which means they can then invest, they can consume, and move the world economy forward, right? If Ron does not have access to this capital, then he can't go forward with his farm, and he can't hire these people. If Adam does not know about Ron, then he can't lend him the money. Currently, the thing that's potentially stopping this from happening is an, is an intermediary. And when I say stopping, it, it means that Adam might be able to find Ron and know that Ron needs only, let's say, $1,000 a month to make his farm work, and Adam might be willing to lend him the $1,000. But the whole process it takes to lend him the money, to get him there, the fees that would have to be involved, the time it would take to underwrite, to make sure that Ron is trustworthy, to make sure that Ron then pays Adam back the, the interest plus the principal and everything, it might cost so much that it's not worth the risk. And the $1,000 a month that Adam would like to lend Ron to keep his farm going isn't worth it because it's going to cost him too much and he's not going to get enough of a return based on his risk. Because the intermediaries are taking their fees and they're causing the friction. Now remember, there's a good reason why we've had intermediaries in the past because the intermediaries take on a lot of the risk and a lot of the trust because Adam doesn't necessarily know Ron, which means he can't really trust him and the risk is too great, uh, in the, it has been too great, and you have to outsource that to this intermediary. For that, the intermediary takes some fees and has to uh, impose some level of friction because they have to do the underwriting, because they have to keep Adam's money safe. So now, in the decentralized world, the goal would be to partially get rid of this intermediary and somehow create some sort of marketplace where the Rons of the world can come in here, talk about who they are, show, that, show their potentially their credit report or their business plan, or just somehow have some sort of uh, contract that says, here's the money I need, here's how I'm going to use it, and here's how I'll pay you back. And the atoms of the world can find the Rons of the world in this marketplace very easily and say, I will lend you the money. There is virtually no friction here because this is all happening electronically. Ron gets the money and he pays Adam back interest electronically. There is collateral that is collected electronically and this can all happen with very low fees and very low friction. 
this is part of the goal of the decentralized finance world. It increases RON's access to capital and it increases Adam's access to investments. Okay. Now from a social aspect, that's great. If, if I'm the type of person, that, or if Adam's the type of person that says, I want to try to invest in some of these uh, smaller projects around the world and help out, that sounds great. But what if I'm the typical investor who just says, look, I just want a higher return on my investment. Or Ron is the typical business owner maybe here in the US or some other developed nation that says, I just want to raise a whole bunch of money to go invest in real estate. Well, a lot of this is really the same because Ron still has a certain access to capital and Adam still has the capital and a certain access to investments, right? So Ron might need to raise this money for some real estate project, but he still has access to only a certain amount of capital. It might be a bank for which he's going to go through uh, underwriting, which involves his credit report, his business plan, the underwriting he goes through, the collateral, etc. It might be that he's going to go to friends and family or to other investors he's used, but Ron has a certain access to capital. And because his access to capital might be relatively limited, he has to charge a higher interest rate. It might be 9, 10%. Or he has to pay a higher interest rate, 9 or 10%. Adam, since Adam only has access to certain investments, and those might be putting money in the bank, it might be investing in the stock market or some other public companies. Adam only has access to a certain return on the investment for the risk he's willing to take. Now what decentralized finance again promises in here is to take out some of those intermediaries that are in the middle here and create a marketplace in the middle here which is all somewhat based on code and the code is what is going to take on some of the trust and the risk here. So the people like Ron can come in here and this code will evaluate how trustworthy he is. The code will help with the contract that says how much he's going to pay in interest. The code will help with the collateral. Which means the people like Adam can find this and fund it for relatively low fees and relatively low friction. So what this whole system has done is it has increased Ron's access to capital and increased Adam's access to investments. The increase in access to capital means Ron can get capital from more sources and potentially cheaper. It means that Adam can get access to more investments, which means his ROI for a certain level of risk is potentially increased. So why is decentralized finance important? It's important because partially it's taking out the intermediary. The disintermediation causes lower fees, lower friction. On one hand, it causes an increased access to capital. And on the other hand, it causes an increased access to investments. I can create a more custom portfolio that better matches my risk and can give me a better return. Ron can have a better business that gets him more money and creates more opportunities because he doesn't have to spend all of his time trying to find the people that have the money and give them a higher rate of return. It really is potentially better for everyone involved and this is why it's important. It's important if you're on the investor side because you can customize and get a better return. It's important if you're on the side that actually needs the access to the capital because you are going to potentially have more access to it without having to jump through as many of the hoops as you were jumping through before. So that is why DeFi is really important and that's why we're really excited about it is all the potential by outsourcing trust and risk to some level of code we can create this marketplace, increase access, increase returns, and increase business worldwide. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out at interaccess.io, and let us know if there are any other topics you want us to cover.